welcome back to small scale stuff. Uh, I'm doing another Warhammer terrain type of build. I really enjoyed the last one, uh, but I thought this time I'd do one on more of an industrial theme. I'm planning on picking up some uh, like Space Marine type figures, and I thought before I get them, I will make a diorama for them and hope that they end up going together so the first thing I'm doing is I want to make some industrial sized tanks you know be it for petrol, oil, toxic waste, whatever and I saved a couple of food tins so I decided to use them I almost left them as bare metal but I didn't quite like the texture of it. I thought I could maybe, I thought I thought I could maybe do better myself. So as you can see, I've just cut circles of cardboard to glue onto the bottom of the can, which in turn will become the top. The thing I'm doing there is I'm just gluing in a few bits of foam, so I'll have a little bit more surface area to, when it comes to gluing these cans onto the work surface. For the sides of the can, I simply cut strips of cereal box and with my hot glue gun, attached them around the outside of the can. What this gives me is a, a fresh, brand new blank canvas basically, so that I can paint well and decorate how I want to decorate. With the tins all covered with card now, it was time to start uh, adding decoration and what have you. So I cut lengths of cereal box card again at approximately 10mm thick and at, all the, at both ends, top and bottom, I attached a strip. With the horizontal strips going around the can all attached as I wanted, I decided to then add some vertical strips to show support and add more detail. This again was simply done out of the same cardstock, glued on with my hot glue gun. I thought I'd include a short clip of my work area where I sit and work. It's only a small, tight area, but I'll make it work for myself. Anyway, back to the project. Um, you will see throughout this video that there are bits done that I don't show. Basically because I think it's pointless showing it. You know how to cut and how to glue. You probably know everything about what I'm doing. But you know. I just think some things aren't worth the mess about including. So what I've got here is. On the on the taller main tank. I've added an inlet pipe. I suppose the thick round cardboard tube at the side. I've also added a bit of cross stitch mesh on the top to act as metal grating I suppose if anyone has to get up there and walk on it what I'm looking at at the minute is uh, how to arrange the pipe work that I want to put to and from the tanks so I'm just laying it out roughly how I see it in my mind's eye and getting a rough idea of bits I'm going to need and just moving forward slowly but surely Another detail I want to include and one that I think makes a massive difference to any any kind of diorama is rivets. So what you see me doing here is just going around with a, a bamboo stick uh, applying a little dot of glue to selected spots and then with my uh, craft knife picking a 
rivet it up and attaching it to the glue. What these rivets are, I believe they're like for nail art, the tiny little rhinestones and I pick them up at my local pound store and you get quite a lot for for just a pound and you know they're cheap enough and you get many enough that you buy a few sheets here and there and you'll never really run out of them there is so many so as you can see I'm just going around applying rivets here and there I'm trying to lay them out uh, in some sort of uniform pattern how I imagine they would be in reality one of the beauties of these um, these little rhinestones is, is that they're actually self adhesive they have a sticky back on them you know like double sided tape or something um, but I like to apply uh, I like to add a little dot of glue as well just, just to make sure and up to now uh, it's not failed yet so there you have it there's the rivets applied to these two pieces and as I say I think they had a, a great bit of detail and something I really like doing so I've got to a point now where I think I need to start working on the base so as you can see I've cut myself a bit of insulation board and um, because I want it to be like a factory type environment I'm not going to use a, a muddy type mix I've actually cut myself a piece of foam card is it foam board or whatever the same size to glue onto the top of it and now I'm just putting the two cans I've already prepared in place to try and get a rough layout of what I can get on there what space I've got and what I can add I've also decided to add walls to two sides of the diorama again these are just cut out of foam board to the correct size and they will be glued to the outer edges of the insulation board as I said earlier you are going to see things develop within this video that you don't actually see happen but if I showed you everything that I'm going to do or that I have done this video will be lasting days and obviously that's no good for anybody's pleasure. So placing the walls in place to make sure that they're a good fit, correct size, I'm uh, quite happy with them. To add a bit more detail I'm cutting more of this cross stitch mesh to sit under the chemical tanks. This will also hopefully show that they are sat on a metal grate of some sort to offer a bit more support under the heavy weight of the tanks. So it's just it was just a simple case of cutting a bit to size and uh, gluing it down to the base under the tanks. It's really difficult to see white on white. Um, sorry about that but that's what colour the stuff is. It's the way it goes. Um, but all I did really was put it in place once cut to size and uh, glued it down with my hot glue gun. With more cardboard strips I decided to trim around the walls and kind of frame them out. Uh, I wanted these cardboard strips to represent steel supports within the wall and I would also uh, create a steel door frame and door out of card which you will see sooner or later. This was just quite easy, quite basic, cut some 10 mil card bit of PVA and stick it in place obviously for this one in particular I've had to measure out and lay out where I want them so they look nice and even I never strive for perfection but you know to get some somewhere near I'm alright with that 
So off camera I got a bit more of the walls framed out and a door made all out of cereal box. Pretty simple to do, just a bit of careful measuring and cutting and glue it down and it's done. So what I will be doing is the other wall and the rest of the framing. I won't put this on camera but you'll get the idea I'm sure. I started to notice that the walls, even though I've put the card on it, were starting to look quite plain. So as I've just shown you on camera the beads, it's time to add more rivets. I'm applying them in the same method with a little dot of glue and then sticking them down. But and again what I'm trying to do is keep it uniformed. Put them in places where I think they would be, you know, not just dotted about anywhere you know keep them with a ele an element of tardiness and what have you and hopefully it'll end up looking decent so that's all the rivets put into place and i uh, found a couple of bits of plastic to act as, act as hinges i have also included a score mark along the wall to act as if it was a joint in the concrete wall and that's how we're looking so far that's uh, where we're getting to so the next thing I want to work on is uh, some gantry or walkways for this I'm just using more cereal box card and I also found some quite fine gauge metal mesh in my woodworking workshop and uh, I decided to use that uh, it's quite small gauge but it does work quite well um, the only reason I'm using this is because I run out of the cross stitching mesh which I'd have preferred to use because when you cut this mesh the edges of it are really quite sharp and you know there was a couple of times when I might have caught my skin and cut myself a little bit nothing major but you know all the same to trim it just using 10 mil strips of cereal box card glued on with my hot glue gun as you can see To support these gantries I decided to use the tube from a roll of tin foil or cling film. Um, I went with this because I don't have any suitable material to make like eye beam framing or anything like that. Um, I think I needed a new blade in my knife there because I was trying to cut through all this stuff and it just wouldn't have it. So I basically grabbed my little modelling saw and started to cut it this worked really fine and I was actually quite surprised how tough this cardboard tube was I buggered up the first tube a bit and uh, my cuts were crap so I grabbed another tube that I've got and recut the supports and just basically glued them to the bottom of the gantry with my hot glue gun I decided to stick the outer walls onto the base of the diorama just simply done with a bit of PVA and a few pins to hold it in place this decision actually I think might come back to bite me in the ass, but I'll explain more about that later
so that's all the pieces I've made so far in their place and it's really starting to take shape now I can see finally where it's heading for a while now I've been looking for something to make thinner pipes with and I was in my local pound store and I found these straws that you can make up yourself to make funny shapes to drink through and what have you they come with a couple of T's, a couple of straight bits and a couple of right angles and they're just all push fit and they were a really good fit even with straws that didn't come with it uh, to the point that I haven't even bothered gluing them together um, you put push them in and they hold quite nicely so the straws that actually came with it were clear but for some of it the straws weren't long enough for what I needed so I just grabbed out some of the old paper straws that I had laying around and used them and as you can see they work out quite well fit nicely and easy to put together cut everything so as you can see I'm continuing to fiddle about with these fittings and straws and I'm making the pipes that I want to make it's going quite nicely and I'm managing to achieve everything I want I wanted the walls to look like uh, they were made out of concrete and for quite some time I couldn't really work out how to achieve this and uh, I suddenly realised that I was thinking about it so much and the answer was quite simple I basically got a bit of uh, wall filler added some water to soften it and water it down a bit and just stippled it on with an old brush um, really simple method can't believe it took me so long to think about it and it was really easy to do and hopefully you will agree when you see it done quite effective I've got everything covered with a coat of primer out of a spray can uh, so now it was time to start painting individual parts with the colours I wanted to use again as I mentioned earlier I think sticking everything down to the diorama base was really biting me in the ass and I haven't forgotten but I will explain about this what I mean later I knew in the long run that there would be a hell of a lot of grey colours on the diorama. So I wanted to inject a bit of colour. Now I was originally going to paint these containers in like a steel colour. But then I decided to use copper and bronze just to inject a bit of colour and um, I don't know maybe make these two containers like a bit of a focal point of the diorama I didn't want everything to be grey because I knew because of the industrial style I've used there would be a lot of greys in it and it'd all end up blending into one and being quite boring not really sure how it's happened but I used brass and copper on the two tanks and both colours have ended up looking very similar I thought the grey primer was actually a really good base colour for the concrete panels in the walls but even with the texturing I've done I thought just the grey primer left it a little bit too plain and a bit too boring. Now I will admit I need to practice dry brushing I'm not very good at it at all so I thought to use the sponging method so I just ripped a bit of sponge off and started dabbing it into the paints I wanted to use and just lightly 
dabbing it off as you can see I'm taking the excess paint off and then applying it onto the walls and for me this worked out quite well I had to go over it a couple of times because when the paint dried it it, it kind of faded quite a lot and you couldn't really see it so much so I went over the whole thing a couple of times with a couple of colours and you know it, I, I managed to achieve a reasonable effect for the floor I used the same technique again a couple more shades of grey just sponged on lightly and built up and built up until I was happy with the you know with the shade of paints that were going on took a bit of doing there was a uh, more area to cover than I actually thought but in the end it got there to add a further and final tone to the diorama I decided to put on a black wash homemade out of just ink and water um, I was really nervous about this stage I thought if I'm gonna knacker this it's gonna be now but I took it steady I took it slow and worked at it um, blathered it on and then as you can see dabbed it off if I thought it was a bit too heavy with a bit of paper towel So as you can see I've gone over the whole diorama including the containers and walkways with the black wash just to tone it all down a little bit and add another shade. Um, it was time to add in a few final paint touches I guess. Um, I'd squirted out a big blob of glue in a couple of places around the tanks and pipes so I thought it was time to paint them now for this I decided to use a fluorescent green by Vallejo because I really wanted it to pop out and be like a toxic looking horrible kill you if you go too near it kind of liquid so I just spent a bit of time with a small brush doing a couple of coats of that so now what I'm doing is I'm going around the diorama uh, drilling holes with my pin vise all the way around might sound, seem like a strange thing to do but all will come apparent very soon just dobbing on a few more dots of paint and the reason why is coming up any moment now I decided to add lights again the lights I'd got were actually white and I didn't want them to be so I just added a simple bit of acrylic paint to them to give them different colours. Another detail to add is a few miniature posters I found on the internet, downloaded and printed off.
So there you have it, the completed diorama. I really enjoyed building this and I hope you've enjoyed watching the process. I do have some miniatures that I've yet to paint to go with it and I'll probably make a little standalone video to show you the results of that. But for now, I'm going to leave you with a few photographs of the scene and say thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you again in my next video. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.